back with another episode of the My Team series on Fantasy Football Hub. And this time I'm joined by Rambo, aka Nubade, or Nubade, aka Rambo, whichever way you want to go around it. And we're going to build your team and see how you come out in the leaderboard. I believe you are the ninth person to come on, so it'll be interesting to see where you finish. How are you today? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm just keen to finish first. But that's where yeah. I'm at. <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> geez, coming in all guns blazing. I hope you do. You know, there was a good score put up for top. I won't tell you what it is yet, but um, you'll be doing well to beat it. If you beat it, you're a hero. So podium place definitely within your grasp. Let's see what you can build. Yeah, you have played FPL in the past uh, and you've made some content around it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, me and a very good friend of mine, James Alcott, hosted the FPL FY show, which um, I can very happily say was quite popular among the FPL community. Got to know a lot of the guys within the FPL community. I religiously play FPL. I've had my team in my head since like the end of last season so um <laughs> i'm a bit too addicted to it my wife's not very happy about it most of the time but you know it is what it is let's get stuck in anyway do you want to tell us who your goalkeeper is i've gone with the uh, brentford's david raya okay raya yeah very popular pick four and a half mil what's the logic he's well he's cheap there's very expensive forwards and midfielders in the game this year and then also i think brentford are I wouldn't say they're defensively sound, but they're not going to concede as many goals as someone like maybe Southampton might on an off week because we know Southampton can win a game 1-0, then lose 5-0. Um, mm. And I back Brentford to do all right this season. So even though I backed them all of last season to get relegated, uh, David Raya, I think, is the safest, cheapest choice. Very good. And who are you going to go for your backup? Hilarious, because I've just absolutely battered Southampton. I'm going for Gavin Bazzuno. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there he is. Again, 4.5 million cheapest chips. I actually think he'll start because I think Southampton need a goalkeeping change uh, ASAP. Mm. He's decent with his feet, um, but more so he's a really good shot stopper. And obviously say, save points are a bit of a trick in my opinion. Um, mm. Now, unless you're David De Gea, where you make nine saves in a game, but then you might concede four. It's a bit of a catch-22. <laughs> yeah, no keeper is really the best option, but I'd go Gavin Pizzuno just purely because he's cheap as chips and he's going to play every single game. Well, I like that because generally what people are doing is they're going for like a Raya and then like a four million fodder. But if you think Pizzuno is going to play, maybe it's worth that extra half million. So I like, yeah. I like tinkering. I like the idea of Brentford playing United one week and Southampton playing Fulham. So, you know, you need to be, you need to have options. Oh, there he goes. Yeah, like so for game week two, I suppose there, if Bazuno does start that first game against Spurs on your bench, you'll have him against Leeds in the second game. And you go back to Raya for Fulham. And then maybe, well, you'll get United and Chelsea there for Bazuno, But then you're into Wolves and Brentford territory. So, yeah, interesting. Interesting. Let's see how it goes. So, your first defender. Who have we got? Uh, no brainer for me. Trent, he's like, we had this discussion all over Twitter last year. He's obviously priced the highest for a defender, but the amount of points he gets is as many as a midfielder and a forward. So mm. for seven and a half million, I'm pretty sure he is, is so cheap. I mean, anyone watching this who hasn't got Trent in their team, I know it's mm. very, very, very template, but it's Trent Alexander-Arnold. He gets yeah. a lot of points. Get him in your team. You've got him on your wall. I'm not even a Liverpool fan. I'm just a like an FPL what? fan. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a degenerate. I grew up a United fan and then started just cheering whoever, you know, was scoring me points. So I just stopped calling myself a fan of like clubs. I'm just a fan of football and fantasy. And Absolutely. yeah, sad little man here in the corner. But um, who's your second defender? Uh, I've gone for uh, Cucurella, uh, purely Cucurella? Be okay. not because he plays for Brighton, purely because I think he's going to City. <laughs> And I think it will be done before the first game week. So he, I think you have to have a City defender in there because they will keep clean sheets because they keep so much of the ball. And then prior to Cucurella, Cancelo, who's played left back, who will probably go and play right back once Cucurella comes in, City focus their play down the left side. And I think that will happen again this year. And with a proper left back who gets forward, who's got a very high volume of uh, XA, don't like to use that stat, but I'm going to use it for this for this battle because it's necessary. He's cheap as well, five million. It's the only way into the city defense. He's probably not going to get tinkered around too much. But however, if he doesn't go to city, then this entire spiel goes in the bin. Yeah, I, th I think I, I like the balls of that. You know, going for the, the future transfer and, and going from that angle. I think if he did get the move, I'd be surprised if he sort of avoided the the pep roulette, and I'd be surprised if you mm. could hang your hat on him. But okay, well, who would you play? initially, who would you play left back, Cancelo, and maybe Walker at right back. I don't know, but the point is, Cucurella would be the obvious choice. But I just don't think he comes in and starts. 
Do you know what I mean? I think it takes mm. a few game weeks, and then I think it takes maybe six or eight game weeks before he could be considered nailed if he played well. Do you know what I mean? I just mm. think it takes a while for him to get used to Pep's system and da 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 da. But ballsy pick. If he does go, he's definitely a nice option of five million at Man City. But there's a big if. But I like it. I like the balls in predicting the future. So fair play to you. Let us know in the comments if you think Cucciarella will end up at uh, Man City. And, and just to let you know, by the way, if he was to stay, Lamptey at four and a half million, which is half a million cheaper, is projected to do a bit better. So Lamptey, we remember how, all, how amazing he's been, how electric he's looked in the past, bar injury. So maybe he could be where you go if, if Cucciarella doesn't come off. But who's your, who's your third defender? Well, my next pick is Tarek Lamptey. For all the reasons oh, you just said, I just sold it. I just told. I just tried to tell the future, and then you turned around and actually told the future. So I literally predicted it like that. Yeah, and for everyone watching, I didn't see this draft before. Before I think you might have sent it to to Alex, the producer, but I haven't had a look at all. So I'm 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 interested by this. The two Brighton boys. You think they're going to be split up? Yes. So I think Lampy had a really injury prone season last year, but purely because of the style of wing back he is and the way Brighton play, the wing backs bomb on so high up the pitch their wingers tuck in. And the fact that they've bought an undev up front who's very he's a fox in the box, a little bit more like a uh, little bit more of a fox in the box than Neil Malpai, and hopefully gonna do really well in the league. Uh, I think Lamptey will supply uh, a lot of assists from the right hand side. And if Cucciarella goes or Cucurella, um then they definitely will be heavily playing their football down the right hand side because they're linked to Brandon Williams, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I think Lamptey at that price as well. Everyone knows I'm stingy. 4.5 mm-hmm. million. That's my guy. Uh, what I like about this draft is it's different because every week we get the same old big at the back stuff, you know, Trent and Robertson and Cancelo and Reese James and maybe a Perisic or a Chilwell. It doesn't look like you're going big at the back here. So it looks, it, I'm really interested to see how many biggies you've got up top. But uh, who, who's your fourth defender? Uh, I've gone with Perisic, who I think is quite a popular pick at the moment mm. because there's a lot of threads going on around about his numbers under Conte, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I've mainly picked him because I think he typically has a really good run at the start of the season. So when, whenever he's been at Inter, regardless of Conte or whoever, he's always fit for the first 10 games. It's really odd. Go do a bit of digging. But the first 10 games, he tends to be fit and he tends to be on it. He comes back fresh from the summer holidays, essentially. And then he has a really big dip in form. And then end of the season, he gets going again. New sign-in. He will play because Spurs don't have another left wing back that they're gonna they're gonna utilize. How he gels in, I'm not too sure, but Conte's worked with him before. And if the early ten game thing is anything to go by, at five point five million, uh, he's a nice option. But also at that price range, I can downgrade him at any time because there's so many mm-hmm. other options below five point five million. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? You know, it gives you the flexibility to switch to anyone on the screen here: Walker, Thiago Silva, Lucas Dean. Doherty, who's been sort of thrown out there a bit, it's half a million cheaper. Tierney, Koulibaly, Romero, Dunk, the, the list goes on. So, like, I, I love the flexibility that a Perisic brings there. And equally, he could go out and score a load himself. You know, that attack and wing back on the left, cutting in, having a pop with his right. Mm-hmm. I'll be interested to see how the form goes. You know, maybe he does come out of the gates flying, maybe not. So, time will tell. Who's your fifth slot in defence? Uh, is Kieran Tierney. Um, Kieran I Tierney. I think, think Arsenal will do well this season. I backed them last season to do well. Whenever Kieran Tierney played, Arsenal were a lot better than when, when he didn't play. The problem I had here was choosing between a 4.5 million Kyle Walker-Peters and a 5 million Kieran Tierney. But I think when I've got Bazuno, I never want to be in a situation, no disrespect Ralph Harson or Southampton, but I don't want to be in a situation with two Southampton defenders um, mm. in my keeper and a defender. So then I was kind of looking down the lane of Arsenal. I felt I really wanted someone from Arsenal, um, especially at the back. And Tierney has a really, really good output when he plays. The problem is if he stays fit. If he doesn't, again, 5 million to 4.5 million isn't that big a drop because I think with all five of my defensive options, I could play three at any given time. I, th- I think the the interesting thing here for me with the likes of a Tierney is Zinchenko's come in. Uh, they're both 5 million. I mean, Zinchenko, it's a weird one. I actually haven't done the digging or looked at this, but I know like at Man City predominantly he played left back and I know at the international level he can play a much more attacking role. Does he come in and hamper Tierney's game time, do you think? Or are they going to play Zinchenko elsewhere? 
elsewhere. That's because well, Tierney's been so good. It seems weird to replace him, but he has been injury prone. So maybe Zinchenko was a bit of cover for there, but can push further up. I don't know yeah, what their plan is. So he played uh, Zinchenko played left back against Chelsea in in like Arsenal's big preseason game, but that's hmm. mainly because I don't think Tierney's fit yet, or he's not one hundred percent fit. I think Zinchenko will play left back and will play midfield. In a way, I I, under, I can completely understand if someone goes for Zinchenko. Uh, but if he plays midfield, he's not going to have the same output he has if he plays left back because he's not going to be playing in, in attacking midfield. He'll be playing in the sitting two alongside Party or Xhaka. I think mm. Arsenal have bought him in for that reason because Party's got such a bad injury record. Xhaka's injuries have been non-stop as well, also suspensions and so on and so forth. Um, so I imagine he'll just slot in into midfield when Tierney's fit. Uh, and plays left back. I think Nuno Tavares might be going out alone, so that maybe guarantees that Tierney will definitely play if he's fit. But it is it is a tricky one to choose. You'll have to judge that mm. one at the start of the season to see if Tierney's fit and where Zinchenko fits in. And the other thing with Tierney is a lot of people will be going, "Oh, Tommy Asu's half a million cheaper." Or yeah, so so I get that. But whenever I did the digging. I, I remember thinking distinctly that Tierney is worth the extra 0.5 here. If fit, if playing over Tommy Asu, I think his attack and output definitely justifies the half million. So if you can afford it, which this back line looks like it can, I like the Tierney pick as long as he's fit. So up into midfield now, who is your most ma- nailed midfielder? Uh, I've got obviously got Salah. I think um, I can't believe there's people out there saying, ah, Salah's not going to do this and Salah's not going to mm. do that. There's always a sign with Salah, and it's, this is non-football related, which is obviously not great for what we're doing here. It's non-stat related. But when Salah makes a change over the summer to something aesthetic, he is about to do a madness during the season. <laughs> last year, he, no, the year before last, he suddenly had abs. Last year, he, had, he suddenly had biceps. And this year, he's got blonde tips in his hair. So something oh, no. is happening. Does he uh, he yeah. does. I, I don't think it's a good look, personally. It's a little more ginger than it is blonde. But when you've got jet black hair, that is what happens. So if you are watching this and considering dyeing your hair blonde, don't do it. It'll probably go ginger. But um, that is why I've gone with Salah. But also, he's most Salah, man. It's I don't even. Yeah. I feel like there's no conversation even to be had about whether. I, l- I like that you actually had something to add there because every week it's the same. You know, it's Mo Salah. Da 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 da. The, the beauty of it is, I think you have to have Salah for Fulham and probably Palace. And if at that stage he's had a couple of blanks in a row, or if Liverpool look out of sorts in any way, shape, or form, he can become anyone. And I think personally, De Bruyne's going to smash it out of the bat. I, th- I think this is going to be a huge season for him so I, I already have it in my head like Salah has a couple of games there to impress me and then we'll see what happens but we'll move on from Salah who is your second midfielder I've gone with Sancho now okay. I, I'm really split between Grealish and Sancho I think I'm going to wait right until the final deadline to make this call I, I, I think Grealish is going to have a great season this year I think he's had the pep settling in time Bernardo had that issue several others have had the issue and then they come up very good in the second season his bromance with Haaland is Wonderful, mm. and Haaland's going to score goals. But in saying that, I've watched United a lot more in preseason, just by chance, and I don't believe preseason is that much to go by. Uh, but Sancho looks better immediately, and I think he's, he needs the settling in period. He's talked about a lot on social media where he said um, on stories and stuff that he's now loving life in Manchester. And he's very much so a player that if he's happy, he's performing. Um, mm. And United will have a new manager uh, bounce. It, it is absolutely inevitable uh, their fixtures aren't terrible. And I think if they get going early, he'll be the one to go for. Because I don't particularly fancy uh, Rashford or Martial. So it's Sancho. One of them is going to provide great value or maybe even a couple of them, depending how United get going. I think having one is interesting. Mm-hmm. And it'll be really interesting to see which one of them actually prevails because I can't see them all bagging a million points every week. One of them's going to shine, but they've all been doing well in preseason. Sancho, love it. Let's see who's next. Uh, Luis Diaz, uh, very popular uh, very popular pick. I actually thought when I picked him, it'd be a rogue shout, but at 8 million, mm. uh, I think he got 64 points last year. And Liverpool's run of fixtures actually is really nice, all the way up until, I'd say, game week seven. You've got Fulham, Palace, Bournemouth, Everton, Wolves, Newcastle, then United and Chelsea in between. Liverpool will lean on him a lot more this season. And I've watched a little bit of him in pre-season. He's, get, he's gained some muscle, which I think is really important for him because he was a little bit lightweight last year. And I also think back to when Liverpool first signed Mane and Salah, they weren't killers. They were yeah. not as flary as Diaz, but they weren't killers, essentially. Diaz will become a killer this year. It's, it's in Klopp's DNA to turn forwards into a little bit less flary, but a lot more dangerous in the box. So I think having two Liverpool attackers in that early, early period in the season where I think they will be trying to prove that they can score goals, 
feels like a, a good good option. Yeah, I like it. Not many people are going with the double up of Liverpool guys, but I mean, why not? You know, people have probably wanted to do it with Salah and Mane for seasons, but haven't been able to afford it. Now the new Mane costs just eight million, so I like it. Who is your fourth option? Uh, Saka. Uh, who I Saka. think again, I don't know how popular this one is, but I think he got over a hundred and seventy five points last year. Uh, he's 8 million, which I think is a bargain. But I've actually just looked at the fixtures and just thought, I think Arsenal are going to score goals. Um, mm. Palace, Leicester, Bournemouth, <laughs> Fulham, Villa. It's such a good early run. And I think Ar- Arteta and Arsenal will try and set the set the tone early this season. So in my opinion, Saka was like, when I looked at my team, it was Trent, Salah, Saka and one other that were dead set. I'm interested because for me, and I don't know if you have them, don't spoil it for us, but... For me, it came down to Saka or Gabriel Jesus. And I think with what Jesus is doing in preseason, it swayed me to put my 8 million there as opposed to on Saka. So I thought Jesus looked good up there and I could fill this spot with the likes of a 5.5 million netto or whoever else. Who's your fifth midfielder? Once again, you named him in... Uh, and I promise anyone watching this, John has not seen my team. And I have actually made a few changes whilst we've been doing this video. <laughs> um, Pedro Neto at 5.5 million. The price is outrageous. They've done him mm. so dirty. I think he'll look at this and be livid that they've priced him at 5.5 million. He's dirt cheap. He will play this season. And Bruno Large was really impressive last year. But the one thing he was missing is counter-attacking players who were dangerous in the final third. Uh, he had a very serious injury. We don't know how good he's going to be when he comes back. But at that price range, there was nobody else that I thought... Mm. If they get going, they're going to be really, really good. Uh, we'll still need a striker, by the way. It will depend on whether they find a striker. Again, this is when I wait right until uh, deadline day. But yeah, for now, Pedro Neto. Yeah, and in preseason, he's been playing almost out of position. He's playing, playing I think, in a front two with him, him yeah. and his. You have 21 and a half million for your forward line. I will start with probably the least popular choice, uh, Callum Wilson. Seven Callum and a half Wilson. Million. I love this guy, man. He's an F. He's an FPL. Um, there is a term for it. Which I completely slipped my mind. Is good when you don't have him, and bad when you have him. What is the term for that? There is an <laughs> FPL. If you, if you're watching this, you're in the comments. What is that FPL term? It slipped my mind. But they play Forest, Brighton in their first two games. I think Newcastle will do a lot better than they did last year. Naturally, um, when I looked at their team, I, no one stood out to me, and I needed a striker who was cheap um, but will score goals. And Callum mm. Wilson, he does score goals. He got seventy-five points last year when he barely played. He was injured for about two thirds of the season. So, bit of a bit of a could be a horrible pick, but I'm gonna back it. I, I like it. I, I like the opening fixtures. You know, particularly obviously Forest. You do have City and Liverpool in game week three and five. I think I've I've had this debate with myself recently. Would I go Wilson or Tony? And I think I would pick Tony. Um, mm-hmm. but they, you know, the opening couple of fixtures, you can always pivot from Wilson to Tony or to whoever. I don't know a Watkins looks good or an Embuemo or whoever looks good. You could pivot to. So I like having the seven and a half million price point. But just Tony is predicted to score a little bit better there. And I don't know what it is about Wilson. I'm just always afraid of an injury. But maybe I need to. Maybe I just need to trust the guy and, and hope he doesn't get injured because Forrest is a really good fixture in Brighton as well. So best of luck with him. Um, he should have penalties too, I believe. And Newcastle yep. have looked much better and signed well so far in the transfer window. So I can't br- knock br- Wilson really. Bravery is the name of the game. Um, <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> but I know you like Bazunu, but you could go the likes of a Bazunu down to a four million or you could go like a Tierney down or Cucciarella to another four and a half, for example. And Wilson could be Gabriel Jesus, just if you were like looking for that, because you would upgrade quite substantially, in my opinion. But maybe you just disagree. And maybe bravery is the name of the game and I'm going against the grain, you know? I do actually have Gabriel Jesus. That's why I didn't need oh. to use that option. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. So, I was in the same position where I was like, Saka or Jesus, Saka or Jesus. But to be honest, I don't know why. And I honestly cannot explain why. But I've gone so big on Arsenal this year with mm. Tierney, Saka, Jesus, and it could completely change. But I think Jesus will have a really, really good start. Then I think he will tail off, and that's when I'll probably get rid of him for someone else. But I think at the start of the season, the idea is trying to get in players that you think will do well in the first few game weeks mm. and try and start off really well and then tinker after. A lot of people seem to be picking him. He's been brilliant in preseason. And he was the player that before the season finished, I said, if Arsenal get this guy... Uh, and I think I said Arsenal get Jesus, Phillips and cover at centre-back, uh, they'll easily challenge for top four. So I think he's a no-brainer. Yeah, love the pick. 
can't complain. Uh, you have six million in the bank for your final forward, and there's a few to choose from. Yeah, I mean, I was I'm a bit stuck here because I don't actually back many of the six million forwards. The only one that stands out to me is only because I've watched German football, only because he's played for the club that I support occasionally, but not many times. But uh, Forrest big signing Taiwo Iwani. Now, I'm not entirely convinced on this pick myself. It's the only pick in my team where I'm like, uh, but uh, I want a third striker who's going to play every single week. Mm-hmm. The problem I had it last season was I'd end up playing with 10 players at certain times because two were suspended. I'd already made my transfer. Hashtag don't make early transfers. And <laughs> I'd, just, I'd just end up in a situation where I wouldn't have a playing forward. Um, so I think he'll play... I don't know how Forrest will do this season. I personally don't think they'll do well, but he's he's not very popular. So he might be one of those picks where he turns up the first couple of games, gets a couple of goals, he hops in off my bench as an automated sub, and I'm absolutely buzzing. But there, I am looking at going really cheap on this third striker and just having uh, bench fodder to upgrade maybe someone at the back, or upgrade maybe Sancho, or maybe Wilson. Because I suppose like you could ultimately drop him from a 6 mil to a, one, to a 4.5, then you have a mil and a half in the bank. And you could upgrade straight off the bat, but there's there's a few ways you could optimize. But what? Because I mean, when I look at this team, what I see is a really strong bench. I see three guys are going to be on that bench who probably will be starters, and even your goalkeeper. You know, so there is a f- couple of million on the bench that doesn't need to be there. I'm going to give you the final chance. Do you want to change that, or do you want to leave it like that, and we'll, we'll churn out a tra- team rating? I've got. Uh, I'm quite happy with my team. Eighty nine percent. 89%. What do you think of that? You don't really know how the rest of the guys have done um, and gals. How uh, do you think 89% is going to fare? In my opinion, if I got 89% on a test, my dad would be absolutely delighted. That's an A star. So <laughs> I think I'll absolutely take it. You'll take it. So look, I'll tell you this much. You've done okay. Now, there have been nine so far. Well, you are the ninth competitor and you've come in seventh. What? <laughs> <laughs> that is you absurd do, <laughs> you do have a very differential team do you know you do have a lot of picks there that maybe aren't optimal or aren't really what people are going for you don't have a Haaland you don't have a Kane you don't have Cancelo Reese James you don't have a Robertson you don't you, you know you don't have a lot of the big picks people are going for that a lot of these people who have beat you have went for to get into the 90% but you come in just under Reeve who got 92% you just beat Kieran and you beat Zach um, you come in there at 7th place 89% joint with Kieran but you beat him on the tiebreaker of predicted points you got 63 predicted points bravery is the name of the game bravery is the name of the game the quote of this episode thanks a million for watching the video like and subscribe on your way out